So in the last video we talked about the line weaver burke equation and the fact that it can be useful to represent enzyme inhibition and its changes. The three main types of enzyme inhibition are competitive inhibition, uncompetitive inhibition and non-competitive inhibition. In competitive inhibition the substrate and the inhibitor competes for the active site, that is to say the spot that catalyzes the substrate. In uncompetitive inhibition, the inhibitor binds to the ES complex or the enzyme substrate complex, and after binding prevents the enzyme from working. In non-competitive inhibition, the inhibitor can bind to the enzyme directly or to the enzyme substrate complex, and then partly or completely stopping the enzyme from working. Now the line weaver burke equation can be used to look at how things change in these three cases. Now remember, the y-axis displays 1 over the reaction rate, the x-axis displays 1 over the substrate concentration, and the y-intercept displays 1 over the theoretical maximum of the reaction. Finally, the x-intercept displays negative 1 over the Michaelis constant. Now imagine drawing an additional line on top of the already existing line. By fixing the line at the y-intercept and rotating counterclockwise, we get the line weaver berg plot for competitive inhibition. By moving this same extra line upwards, while it still remains parallel with the original line, we get the line weaver berg plot for uncompetitive inhibition. Finally, if we fix the line at the x-intercept and then rotate it counterclockwise, we get the line weaver berg plot for non-competitive inhibition. So that's an easy way to remember all of these different line weaver berg plots associated with these three different cases of enzyme inhibition. Now if you want to learn more about competitive inhibition, uncompetitive inhibition or non-competitive inhibition, check out the corresponding videos displayed on the screen right now. Until next time.